Well, maybe I can just give a taste of my own personal experience. I've been at uh, MIT, where I still am, for 65 years. Uh, when I got here, it uh, was a very quiet, passive campus, uh, all white males, uh, well-dressed, uh, deferential, doing their homework, and so on. They re remained that way right through the most of the 1960s, through all the campus turmoil. There were some people involved, but not much. There was faculty uh, peace and justice activity, not much on the part of students. In fact, the campus was so passive that in 1968, when the Johnson, the Lyndon Johnson administration was beginning to try to try to slowly pull out of the Vietnam War, uh, they had an idea that they would sort of make peace with the students. So they s decided to send around the worst possible choice, the former Harvard dean, George Bundy, who they thought would not know how to talk to students. And he would uh, come to campuses and we'd all make friends. And they started off by picking very safe campuses. Uh, MIT was the second on the list. Uh, but they made a mistake. Turned out there'd been a couple of students who'd been actively organizing on campus. And when Bundy showed up, he was surrounded by angry masses of students uh, demanding that he explain and justify the terrible things he'd been involved in. And that essentially ended that effort. And by that time, uh, really a handful of students had succeeded in substantially organizing the campus on a whole variety of issues that were very much alive. Uh, the Vietnam War, uh, racism, uh, uh, the beginnings of the women's movement were just starting, taking off then. Uh, with, and in fact, uh, within a couple of years, MIT became probably the most active and radical campus on, on in the country. And it, without going into the details, it had a major change, a major impact on the culture of the community. Uh, for the first time, there began to be serious discussion of the questions of uh, the uh, ethical elements in technological development. Uh, all goes right to the present. In fact, just a few minutes ago, I was on a, a Reddit-style interchange with students on a whole variety of questions they were bringing up about all kinds of issues. This would have been utterly unthinkable back in the early 1960s. And similar things have been happening on all campuses. It's had a big effect. It's changed the culture, it's changed the society. Uh, there's, if you look over the developments in recent years, there's been severe retrogression on economic and political issues considerable progress on cultural and social issues. So the class nature of the society and its basic institutions have not only not changed, they've gotten worse, uh, but in other respects there's been major changes and it matters. It's attitudes towards uh, women's rights and other civil rights, uh, uh, opposition to aggression, uh, concern over the environment. Uh, these are all major things that have changed. And student activism has been critical all the way through and continue to be. And there's a reason for that, not just here, historically. Uh, students typically are at a period of their lives when they're more free than at any other time. They're out of parental control. Uh, they're not yet burdened by the needs of trying to put food on the table in a pretty repressive environment often. And they're free to explore, to create, to invent, to act, and to organize. And it's been over and over through the years, student activism has been extremely significant in initiating and galvanizing uh, major changes. I don't see any reason for that to change.